Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, it's exciting. I'm going to actually be editing video clips because we are gonna be making blueberry jam. Here, I'll show you over here. So I've got my canner and the jam stuff ready. Here are some of the blueberries. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be actually making like a real YouTube video, not just like one where I filmed the whole way through and there's no cuts. It's gonna be all nice and manicured and yeah. So yeah, blueberry jam. This is a recipe that I kind of invented myself. Um, I use just kind of what I have and what I like and I usually go just to taste, like I don't really measure a whole lot. We're gonna be using eight pounds of blueberries because they were on sale at the store today and I was like, what should I do today? And this is what we're doing because I need to make jam and this is gonna be the first one. So I hope you enjoy. I will give you the recipe or like vaguely what the recipe is. Like I said, I just usually do it to taste, but we'll get into it and have fun. So here we go. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I do is I go through the blueberries and I remove all the stems. Um, this is an example of like the flower. You see how there's like the little thing on the, that's the, what's left of the flower for the blueberry. So I usually remove most of that stuff. You don't have to, it all gets turned into nice jam. So it doesn't really matter, but I like to remove the stems. Um, these ones, I think I've already removed all the stems, but yeah, basically that's what we do, um, just to make it that much easier. And then we're gonna attempt to just like pour all of these in here. I don't think I missed one that time. And then we grab the next one. Um, blueberries don't really like, they do grow in Canada, but I've never been able to find a good blueberry patch to be able to like pick them myself and harvest them. I do it with Saskatoon berries, but with blueberries, um, I usually just buy them. Here's one with a stem. See, so I just, and get rid of it. Um, yeah, so you know, I just kind of like, I don't know, blueberries are one of my favorites. They're really healthy. They've got all those antioxidants in them. So I enjoy it. Um, I kind of got into jamming and canning myself. People are always like, oh, did you like your grandparents teach you or your mom teach you? Not really. My, my mother's mother, she does a little bit of canning and jamming and stuff like, and pickling and things like that. But I didn't really learn from her. Um, it's only after that I got into it that she was like, oh, do you want me to teach you how to make this or this other thing? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. But for the most part, um, I'm sort of self-taught. One of my uncles is really into canning and a little bit into jamming. But like I said, I kind of got into it myself. And then these like mentor figures kind of like asked if I wanted to learn certain like their recipes, stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like I'm always up to learn. Um, learning's like my, my thing. Um, so yeah, basically that's what happened. So yeah, like I said before, we're using, oh, here, let me, there we go. We're using eight pounds of blueberries. Um, whoa. And we're just gonna try our best to make this work. We're gonna be water bath canning. Um, and so if you don't know what water bath canning is, I will show you what it is. If you know what it is, then you're already like miles ahead of everybody else. So yeah, so yeah, this is all we do first. We're just checking to make sure the berries are good, removing any bad ones, eating any bad ones is mostly what I do. And um, then we will have everything we need to make beautiful blueberry jam. I have a few jams that I make every year. So I usually make Saskatoon jam, um, Saskatoon berries. I think in America they're called June berries. So that's, that's what I make, I really like. They grow just like out on the road here, which is very convenient. And then I usually make blueberry. I try and make strawberry, but um, we don't really have enough strawberry plants to make our own, so I have to buy it at the store. Same with the blueberries. And um, we have cranberries. My uncle gave me some cranberries from up north. So I'll be making some cranberry jam as well. I don't know if I'll film it, but um, we will see. The recipe, okay, so the recipe basically, I like to do big batches. 
I don't like this little batch or like single batch kind of stuff. I usually make enough for the whole year. So it's gonna be eight pounds of blueberries. Roughly, my recipe kind of calls for like 16 or 14 cups of sugar. I usually always go less sugar because I like actually tasting the fruit. Um, and these are really good blueberries. So probably gonna use around 10 cups of sugar. And then, whoa. just have a look at that. All the blueberries, there's so many of them. Um, so we're gonna use about 10 cups of sugar. Gonna use probably four or five tablespoons. Um, no, more than that. Eight tablespoons of lemon juice. Then I'm gonna use a bit of vanilla, which is what I like to use in most of my jams, just to give them kind of a little nice thing. And then we're gonna be using some pectin. I'm gonna try using liquid pectin today. I usually only use powdered pectin. If you don't know, pectin is like a component you find in most fruit, and when it gets to a certain temperature, it gels, and that's what creates jam and jelly, is it gels like that, so then you can kind of like spread it on toast and stuff. So we're gonna be using four packets of liquid pectin. Yeah, so that's basically the recipe. Um, I have sterilized my jars. Here, I will show you that as well. One sec here. I like to use our dishwasher because it makes them all nice and clean. So I think we're gonna do, a this, this recipe should do about 24 of these. Um, we will see because I tend to add a bit of water and like I said, my recipes are very, I like, I like kind of do everything by taste and by ear. And so, yeah, this is the sugar. I don't know if I'll be using all of this sugar. I might be using a little bit more. I have no idea. I just like poured a bunch of sugar out. This is the pure vanilla we are going to be using. Um, this will do probably about all of it. I might need to get some more. And then the lemon juice. Um, fun fact, here's a little like ca jamming, canning tip for you. This stuff is pH secured, so you're always gonna get this at like a certain pH, which is really good. Whereas if you use like actual lemons from lemon juice, like one lemon compared to another lemon can have a totally different pH, which can really screw up your recipe. So it's always almost always better just to use lemon juice that they have like corrected. So yeah, and then in here we have the water boiling for the water bath canner. Again, if you don't know what water bath canning is, you are going to learn, but yeah. So we're basically all set up and now we're going to make the jam. Okay, so we're back. Um, and I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of this sugar into the blueberries. There's really no other way to do it than this. So I'm gonna put like half of it in right now and we're just gonna like mash it. Like it's just gonna get absolutely mashed. And so I'll show you when it's done. So this is basically what it's looking like, which is really nice. It's really like a deep, rich purple color, which I love. And we're just squishing it down and we're gonna do a taste test in a little bit just to see if I need to add more sugar, but it's looking good. Hey guys, so I'm also filming live on TikTok. So I've got like cameras everywhere, but this is what the jam looks like right now. And the way that you make jam is you have to get it up to a boiling point that is warm enough. I'm trying to like talk to both sides. <laughs> um, you have to get it boiling so that you get some of the water out of it. And then when you add the pectin at the, at the high boil point at like, I think it's like, it's like 120 plus degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, no Celsius. That's when you get the boiling point and then the pectin, which is the final ingredient that you add, that's what jams and gels the jam. So we're not quite there yet, still mashing. Okay, so we're still live. And here we have the rest of this pure vanilla extract. And we're just gonna pour it in here, kind of haphazardly. And then we're gonna stir it up and that will add a little bit of nice flavor to it. Hey guys, welcome back. So I have this little cooking thermometer kind of thing. So I'm gonna put it in here. And it's gonna tell me what temperature we're at right now. We wanna be at about 210, 220 by the end of this. So right now the thermometer is saying we are very close to 200. We're over 200. We're almost at 220, honestly. 
So when this gets to 220, that's when I add the pectin and then we stir for about five, five-ish minutes, let the pectin really set in. And then once it's set, we take it off the burner, we do a check. Actually, before we, we, before we take it off the burner, we do a check. We make sure that it's looking good. And then um, we can start jarring it and processing it and everything. So that's exciting. So see you in a minute. Come back. So this is pectin, liquid pectin. I've added three packs already, but I thought I'd show you guys what it looks like. It's like this gooey, clear liquid. It tastes like lemon juice. It's super, super bitter, but we're adding four packages of this stuff. And when, when you get your jam up to like 220 degrees Celsius, I think it's Celsius. Maybe it's Fahrenheit. I don't know. I think it actually is Fahrenheit. Um, the pectin helps gel everything. So then we stir it up and then you have nice, beautiful jam. So that's how that works, basically. It's really chill. I really like it. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Welcome back. So before we started, I put a plate in the freezer. It's really cold. It's a really cold plate now. So what we do is put the plate down and we grab some jam, just a little bit, with some berries, hopefully. Um, and we take that jam and we just put it on just like that. And this will allow us to see, see, you guys can see this. This will allow us to see if the jam is going to set properly. So then we put it back in the freezer. Ooh, sorry. Put it in the freezer and then we see in about two minutes, we're going to check if it has set properly. And here it is, okay? So I'm going to attempt to show both, both you guys, because I'm still filming. Actually, I really can't do this safely. There we go. Okay, so what you do is you run your finger through it. So you see how it's like, it's not filling up right away. It's kind of like doing that. You guys kind of see that a little bit? See how that streak isn't like immediately disappearing? Oh, sorry, I'm fogging you guys up again. So you see how this streak hasn't disappeared? That means that it's probably going to set properly. Probably. So, so far so good. Okay guys, welcome back. So now, I need to get one of the washcloths that my mom is okay with me getting dirty. So let me put this here. Here are our jars. I don't know, we don't need this. Here are our jars. This is like so chaotic. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna place a bunch of these right here and we are going to start filling the jars with blueberry jam. Basically, this is how it's gonna work. I'm trying to get in both angles cause I'm filming this live on TikTok and I'm filming this on YouTube. Bear with me, please. Um, so I have this thing, which is very handy. It basically sits in the jar so that you can pour jam into it. Very, very clever. Quite ingenious. So, I want to make sure I'm still stirring this. This needs to stay somewhat hot. This is heating up right now. Okay, it's chaotic. Um, I am a Canadian cowboy, yes. Okay, here we go. So, um, I want to move this over so that I can get access to this better. So we're going to put this here. This is just going to sit on top of here. Hopefully you guys can still see this all. Here we go. So that goes there. Then I grab my ladle and I scoop up some jam and we're going to try really hard not to spill everywhere and we're just going to fill the jars. We're gonna see how many we fill. I spilled. Okay, and so then once we filled one, we try and leave like an inch at the top so that they aren't, um, there's some headroom is what they call it. So then that, that is a jar of jam. A jam jar? Jar of jam, something like that. Anyway, um, that's blueberry jam. That's how we do that. 
And then I also need my tongs. Because I have warmed up the lids. So these are the jar lids. Ah. They are hot. And then I make sure that the top of the jar is totally clean. And it goes on like that. And then we take a ring and we put the ring on just fingertip tight. You don't want to do really hard. And then the jar goes into the canning bath like that. And that is how you do a jar of jam. So I'm just going to do this like 24 times and I will join you in a minute. Okay, I can't exactly show you guys because I need two hands and like I'm currently, that's the tripod, this is what, but these are the jars, they're going to go into the water bath canner and they're going to sink down and it's going to bubble and then you keep them there for 20 minutes and then they're good to go. So that's how that works. I'll show you guys once it's submerged. And now that's just going to bubble away for about 20 minutes as all of the air gets sucked out and it becomes a sterile clean thing. So it's kind of cool. Welcome back. So. The jars have been cooking or boiling for 22 minutes. Now we pull the top off. That's hot. And we have to very carefully get these things off. So now the jars are above water and then I grab them and I'm gonna put them on here. And you're probably gonna hear a popping noise and that is the jar's ceiling. So we just carefully take them out here. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Oh, they're all gonna fall. gonna fall. It's okay. It's okay if they fall. Don't freak out. Don't panic. I'm panicking. No, it's okay. So yeah, they're just like this. That's how easy this is. Boom, that's done. And then I just add these ones back up here onto this. Cause these ones haven't been baked yet or cooked or bathed. They haven't had their bath yet. So this is all we do. And then we sink these ones for 20 minutes and then we're good to go. Okay guys, well, we're all wrapped up. We have cleaned the kitchen. So my parents will love me still, and it'll still be, uh, I'll still be able to make jam. We made 19 jars plus a test jar that I've just kept in the fridge. I didn't water bath can it or anything. I might reuse the water. The water has vinegar in it because it helps the jars stay nice and clear and it keeps them from getting all cloudy. So you can't really pour this on your vegetables or like you can't let it cool down and then pour it on your plants or anything because it'll kill your plants. What you can use it for if you've got vinegar in it is you can use it as like a weed killer. It will kill weeds, but I'm thinking I might make jam tomorrow as well. So we're just gonna save the water. Might use it tomorrow, hopefully. I'd like to use it again because it's a lot of water and I don't want to waste it. But yeah, this is what the jam turned out as. I think it's done beautifully. We'll find out if we set it, if it's set properly. Um, it's gonna sit like this for about 24 hours. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna let it sit there, cool down, set, and then it will go into my storage room and hopefully we'll have jam for basically a whole year. My family doesn't tend to use a lot of jam, so we tend to give it as gifts and things like that. But that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit different kind of YouTube video than what's normal. Uh, I am very sweaty. <laughs> it's hot. Um, my tongue's blue, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. So please leave your comments and questions in the description or down below. And thank you for being here. And I will talk to you guys and see you tomorrow. <laughs>